Thank you, Steve. I think today has been a really, really exciting um, afternoon, actually, not least all because we're here. The fact that this is actually happening. And I have to say, um, just taking the, the very final sort of two questions around the structures and the organisation around whether we have more guidance, I always find it quite amusing as I have, for, as a local government minister, one of the very first meetings I had with officials some time ago, not Steve's officials, I will say, to, to say any blushes, <coughs> a few years ago, was asking me to sign off some guidance notes for local authorities. And it was a letter, so it got a letter of guidance. And uh, when I read it and went through it, I effectively realised that this was a guidance note on a particular issue to explain there were no guidance notes on this particular <laughs> issue, actually related to parish councils. And I remember saying to the officials, I'm not going to be the minister who starts off by being the one who says there are no guidance notes, and this is a guidance note to confirm there are no guidance notes. Um, and it's always, uh, we're always criticised about being too centrally controlling, and therefore I also raise an eyebrow every time I go to anything that involves local government where I have somebody ask me to do more guidance notes. Um, and bids actually are in a slightly different place. There is still a lot of flexibility around bids. As I know they're not a member of British bids, I wish they were, but the Great Yarmouth Tourism bid is under a lot of controversy at the moment because of the flexibilities that have allowed it to work in a particular way. And that's, uh, so I've seen both sides of how that works. And if they're members of British bids, I'm sure they'd be in a better place. But bids do have, Julie rightly said, that uh, ability to raise a levy. So there's a slightly different situation there. With naval planning, I do think we're in quite an exciting place. And I just want to close effectively by putting a challenge out to all of you in the room, as much as to all of us actually on the panel. This has moved, actually, if you think about where we were with that development control system into local plans which are moving into a plan-led system hopefully and with neighbour plan, I used, Terry used a phrase when we first met which I've coined and keep using now about a proactive planning system with neighbour planning I think is absolutely the way forward and if you think about where we were to now having that over six million people covered by a neighbour plan I think all of the work done by the people in the room and those not with us today who have sort of pioneered this process deserves a huge thanks and actually recognition for that phenomenal <coughs> work that's been done. It isn't the easiest thing to do, but as I said in the questions, it has to be robust to be able to have that weight in planning. And the decisions, even decisions by inspectors, are backing that up for plans that are going through as well. The challenge, I would say, is that we have got that six million plus people covered. I want to see that grow exponentially and cover the entire country as quickly as possible whether that is following parish boundaries or others. And there is a job for us to do who know about this, who have done this, who understand, who are excited by it, to spread that message. And I'll just give you an example of where I think we need to improve the way we're all telling the story of how positive this can be. I spoke to the uh, Norfolk <coughs> Area Parish Council's AGM last summer. And I talked about neighbour planning and the importance of it and what it can deliver. And I got some emails and I wrote an article in my local paper about it. And I got an email from a couple of different parish councillors in my own constituency shortly afterwards, absolutely lambasting me for being one of those Westminster politicians who doesn't know what's going on locally, they've got their neighbour plan, they've put a lot of effort into it, and how dare I suggest we don't have a neighbour plan anywhere in Great Yarmouth. After a couple of days, and talking to them, and a few emails back and forth, we're all friends again now, and I had to explain to them that their village plan, one of which was 21 pages long, had half a page on planning, half of which was a photograph of a nice house is not the same as a neighbourhood plan. And they're members of the National Association. So there is some work to do around making sure that all parishes, all people in these areas, understand what a neighbourhood plan is and why it matters. Not just because there's a chance to have 25% of the community infrastructure levy and get involved in that kind of thing in Section 106 agreements, the benefits of that for infrastructure, but the ability, importantly, to guide development in our areas and to make sure it isn't just delivering the houses that we need, and it's doing that, but it's doing it in an appropriate way, in an appropriate place, with an appropriate design to our local areas. <coughs> that's how we encourage more good quality designed development, which is what we all want to see, because that's what creates communities. So the challenge for everybody in the room today, I would lay to you, is to help all of us make sure we spread the message about what a neighbourhood plan is, how it works, why it's important, and what it can deliver for our local areas. I think it's a really exciting opportunity, and it's up to us to make sure we get the benefit of that and make sure it delivers for the rest of our country. Thank you to everybody for coming this afternoon, for making this possible. Thank you to everybody who's taken part and spoken today and who's asked a question. You don't need to rush away. Please take some time to talk to each other afterwards to share some of that best practice. And then let's make sure we do it to the people who are in the room today so we get the message out there wide and far.
Thank you very much.